Sex is ruled by the most primitive part of the brain, unconscious. You can't directly control it. And when, when, a, when you get a woman to undress in front of you, or you see a naked woman, or you see a woman undressing, whatever, that part of the brain says, oh, get ready to have sex. And that's primitive. Just like if somebody attacks me, that part of the brain says, kill them. Well, I'm not a killer and I'm not a sex addict. These are things that come due to ununderstanding our body's energy and using willpower. Now, willpower is the most masculine thing you can do. Welcome to the Super Human Life. I'm your host, Frank Rich, and this is the only podcast in the world dedicated to helping men break free from the shackles of addiction through the power of faith and fitness. It is our goal with every episode to help you take back control and rebuild your body, mind, and spirit. And we do so by bringing you real and raw conversations with people just like you, aiming to find their place in this world while dealing with the everyday struggles and battles that we all face. Now, it is my belief that we were all created for a specific purpose. And if we can harness that belief or faith, then take control of our mind and body or fitness, then we can ultimately create the life that we've always dreamed about, our own superhuman life. I want to let you know how grateful and blessed I am to have you here with me today. Let's get on to today's show. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another amazing and very special episode of The Superhuman Life. As always, I am your host, Frank Rich. And guys, I'm just going to jump right into today's intro because I'm just so excited to get you into this conversation. Now, many of you are going to be familiar with this guest. He sold over 50 million copies of his books. I'm going to repeat that. Five zero million copies of his books. Now, many of you are going to be familiar with probably his first book and his best-selling book, which was Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. But yes, I am speaking with the legend John Gray. Guys, and, 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 and John is somebody that I wasn't really familiar of. I, 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 I was aware of his book, uh, but then I got an introduction from a very close friend of mine, Rob Kowalski. You guys know Rob uh, back from episode 36. And Rob intro to me, and I started to look into what John was doing. And, you know, the, the, the book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, it, it, it takes a deep dive into the differences between men and women. It's an incredible read. I highly recommend everybody picks it up and, and, and takes a look at it. Uh, but John and I go so much deeper in, in this conversation. For those of you that heard the conversation a few episodes back with Dave Asprey, where we talked about the optimal uh, time of ejaculation for men, John and I dive a little bit deeper into this. It's really an extension of that conversation. John has an amazing story. You know, he's, he's in his 70s and, and he's living an incredible life full of energy and full of joy and full of passion. Guys, it is just remarkable what this man is still doing. Um, so he's, he's somebody we need to listen to. Uh, because because he's got he's got the formula he's got the formula for for an optimal life he's got the formula for a thriving relationship he's got the formula for how to hack your life to become the greatest version of yourself guys I absolutely love this conversation with John and I know you're gonna enjoy it as well now if you're new to the to the podcast here we do ask you one thing here we ask you to obviously you know the show's about help it's about support it's about helping men uncover breakthrough in their life now how can you help us in supporting the mission well two ways if you haven't done so yet and you're getting value out of these conversations, make sure to leave us a five-star rating and review, whether you're on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, wherever you're listening to. Guys, we do enjoy those ratings and reviews. It helps tell the algorithm that these, these conversations are meaningful and valuable. And we'll get in, for, in front of more people's eyes just like you. And if you're on YouTube, if you're on YouTube and you're watching us here, we uh, subscribe to the channel. We're, we're dropping these videos every single Monday. Um, and then Tuesday through Friday, we have some really incredible content for men that are struggling with compulsive habits in their life. Um, and then, guys, most importantly, if there's somebody in your life that you know can benefit from today's conversation or even the conversation that we've had here on the podcast, do us a favor and send this link over to them so that they can learn how to uncover and, and become the greatest version of themselves. But without further ado, guys, let's get into today's conversation with none other than John Gray. Hope you guys enjoy. John Hi. Gray, welcome Hi. to the Superman Life, sir. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. No, I'm really, I'm really excited to uh, to dive into to a lot of your work here. You know, um, 14 plus million copies sold of of your first book, Men Are From Mars, Women Women Are From Venus. Am I accurate on that uh, on that number? It's quite a bit more if you go around the world. I've been, I'm in 200 different countries, 45 different languages, so forth. But that's American language. Wow, that is uh, that is that is incredible. And I think I heard a statistic: uh, 50 plus million copies of all of your books. Right. So there's somewhere between 27, 28, 28 books. I mean, um, to kick it off here, John, like to to dedicate that amount of your of your life to helping people with their relationships and 
uh, just all the work that you've been been doing, there's 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 got to be a deep rooted passion for for the work that you're doing. So if we can go back to kind of you know the early '90s or, or when you were really getting started in in your career, you know what was it that that really inspired you to to really commit your life to to helping people uncover uh, the secrets to 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 the relationships and all the work that you've done? Well, you know, I think my career started in, the, in, in 1971 when I became the assistant uh, to Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, who brought transcendental meditation into the West. He was quite mm. popular then around the world. And I was his assistant. I was his youngest teacher of transcendental meditation. I'm a meditation. I was a celibate monk for nine years. And then when I started uh, coming back out into the world, my brother was bipolar and I wanted to study psychology to help him. Meditation alone didn't do it. So... While I was out here studying psychology to help him, discovered I have a talent for uh, counseling, and I started counseling people. And you know, when you when you're really grounded in meditation, you're not so needy of other people's love. You need love, but if they don't give it to you, you just uh, you're okay. And if it upsets you, you just go meditate, open your heart again, and re, re pivot. You know. So I got in a relationship and married my wife Bonnie. And you know, she whenever you're in a relationship, you get that close to somebody having lots of sex, you're, you have no defenses. So you get defensive, you know, you're so close If they look at you the wrong way. Sometimes you're like, Whoa, wait a second. You know, somebody mm -hmm. can shoot me the bird when I'm driving my car. So what? I don't care. So that's called taking it personally. But when you're in a personal relationship, you take things more personally. But fortunately I had my go-to place where I could take my time. I wrote men are from Mars and the whole idea of the cave, you know, many to go to mm. their cave. And now I know my work today is that uh, going to the cave, going meditation or going to the gym or playing basketball or watching the uh, football game, that all is relaxation, uh, but rebuilding testosterone. And men need way, way more testosterone than women do. Otherwise, we're stressed out. And that's like a biological reality that it's fun to talk about today. Literally, if we're stressed as men, our testosterone is low. If we're angry, our testosterone is going down and our estrogen's going up. You know, we want to be supermen. Uh, we don't want to have too much estrogen, just enough to feel love and connection and passion. But if it gets too much, then we get angry or we get, you know, we get passive, become depressed. We have anxiety. We get addictions. Always mm. addiction is making estrogen and lowering testosterone. But it gives a, you know, if you have a porn addiction, for example, for a brief moment, you get to experience being Superman. Your testosterone goes up, but it just goes down lower. And now you have an addiction. And uh, literally balancing hormones is now something we can learn about not taking hormones not taking them but learning how to make them through through certain behaviors so anyway my passion was about relationships because i was in a relationship i'm a loving guy and my button got pushed and i realized you know you got to learn how to have relationships better so your buttons aren't getting pushed all the time so you can maintain a great sex life i really love sex uh, to me sex is making love and you know i wrote books on it i've written 27 mm. books so, you know, I basically, I'm a kind of a self-help junkie. I'm always growing and changing and transforming. I have success, I have sex, I have love, I have children. All, all those subjects I write books on as I go. Because what I found is a lot of the information today is just off track. You know, we're living in a different context. As soon as women are, are independent, it throws our hormones out of whack. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you're with a woman who's very independent. You try to connect with her. You only can connect by going to your female side, your estrogen side, which increases addiction and neediness and so forth. So I help people in their relationships find a way of communicating so they can come back to passion. And that's my passion for this work. You know, and I, this is one aspect. I'm famous for this. So I always talk about this when people want me to. But I also talk about meditation. I teach it. Mm. I also talk about nutritional help. I'm the original brain hacker. You know, Dave Asprey talks about me as, you know, long yeah. before he was out there. I was out there teaching classes and so forth. I love it. You know, I, mind, body, spirit. You know, that's where it's at. And sex. Yeah, so true. And there's 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 so much that we're gonna that that we're gonna pack there. I I'm I'm really curious on this on the stress and 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 the hormones and testosterone and how it lowers that. You know, sharing you with, with you before before we record it. You know, before we kicked off the recording here, the work that I do is it's in that addiction space. So we're gonna spend some time there uh, today as well. But obviously, I'm dealing with men that are that are living many times in a in a stressful state. They're obviously worried if they're hiding this addiction. Uh, so that was fascinating. I I uh, I never heard that with with stress having that impact on. On your hormones and, and we actually had dave on the show a couple of weeks ago so um i know that you you know are, are one of these the, the original biohackers and that's why i'm so excited to just really unpack a lot of a lot of what you said there because what i tried to bring to to my space is is a holistic approach 
You know, there's nobody that's that's addressing porn addiction and talking about the impact of nutrition and how what you put in your body uh, plays a role in your ability to, you know, to rewire your brain. So I think we're gonna have a lot of fun here here today. Keeping with, uh, you know, the men are from Mars, women women are from Venus here real, real short, because I'm, you know, I'm about a, a third of the way, maybe maybe closer to halfway through it. And it's like every page that I turn, like I'm just getting knocked upside the head. Like I should have, I, 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 I should have read this book, you know, 20, 20 years ago. I'm sure it would have saved a lot of, a lot of headaches in, in, in relationships. It's, it's, it's written in such an, in, uh, in a unique way. Like I really feel like you could put it in a, like in a child's hand and he would, you know, because of the way that you, you share it through a story, you know, with the Martians and in the Venusians, like, you know, I feel like a child could extract a lot of the lessons, but at the same time, like a grown man, you know, a, a self-help junkie him, himself, just like, just like you, I've read, you know, uh, probably close to a thousand books in, in my life. I'm, I'm getting so much out of it as, as well. So when you were originally writing it, who were you writing this book for? Well, as I was writing it for the clients, basically, that come to me, heterosexual couples, generally speaking, are people okay. who are heterosexual, single, looking to find love. That's pretty much my audience. And uh, it was my age. You know, I wrote that book. I was probably around 40. I started developing those ideas when I was 35. Okay. And that's really the peak time where, first of all, that's when women hit their sexual prime. But it's also around 28 is where naturally you start having a sense of self and then your fulfillment mm. becomes depended upon sharing that self. You know, it's not a neediness. It only becomes a neediness when you don't already feel good about yourself. Yeah, primarily for men, they need to have a, a sense of self-esteem that's not in any way dependent on a woman. That's really key. Then when you get with a woman, your self-esteem goes up higher dependent on her, but when she's not in a good mood, it only comes back to normal. Because women are like waves, I explained, you know, they go up and they go down. And, and that's just mm -hmm. natural. It's like mother nature, the weather's always changing. And we men, we're more like a, a rubber band. We tend mm. to go in, we pull away. But if we pull away and she doesn't pursue us, we sort of come back to ourself, we spring back. And that's called horny. <laughs> and what, what, you know, I tell women their big problem in relationships, when guys naturally pull back, they get all insecure and they want to come into your cave. They want to ask you what's the matter, what's going on. Let's talk about the relationship and all that stuff at a time when you're already pulling back. You need to pull back enough to where you now feel a strong desire to go back in. But the problem for men is when they do this natural rhythm of coming back, going forth. Once you've gone back and forth, back and forth, you bond each time with better and better sex. But if when you pull away, you masturbate, you just lose the tension in the, in the rubber band. It's like you, you got to feel really horny and not release that energy. Then when you're with her, her estrogen will go higher and your testosterone will go higher. And that that's what that solidifies bonding. You know, I've been married 34 years. My wife passed two years ago. Okay. So it's 35 so years ago that. we got married, but we we're having great sex to the very end. I mean, the last year we didn't, she was sick with cancer and it was very sweet. And I just took care of her and didn't miss sex at all. Cause I'm not addicted to sex. It's just one mm. of the, it's the means to open your heart so quickly. It truly is a making love thing where you can just feel recharged, revitalized and so forth. Uh, but if you're just doing it to get off, it becomes addictive. And that's biological. Uh, we can go into the biology of that addiction or we can continue with Mars Venus ideas. I think uh, narrowing in right there, it's, it's, it's a good place for us to really, really zoom in on, on, on a topic here that I know is going to be valuable to the audience. So, you know, like I was telling you before, um, before we started here, you know, uh, Rob is a close friend of mine, you know, Rob Kowalski, and you, you know, you were on his show and, you know, Rob is the absent expert, you know, I think uh, 14 or 15 in the last 20 years, like he's, He's been at it for, for me. My journey has been a little bit different, but, uh, you know, I, I, I had a porn problem. I had a sex problem for, for a really long, long time. I'm coming up, you know, I'm just celebrated two years, uh, free from porn. And, and, and when I made that decision, um, I also made the commitment that, uh, that, that sex would be something that I didn't, uh, do or, or, or didn't have until I was, was married again. So here I'm two years, uh, abstinent myself as, as well. So I, I, I love everything that you have to say about, um, you know, harnessing some of your, your sexual energy. And so what are we, you know, where are we confused, I guess, with, with the act of, of sex versus making love? Because you've, you've, you've used the terminology making love here a few times. So, so you know, starting that, uh, that conversation on, on, on the biology side of things, um, you know, where, where, where do we have things, things mixed up? Well, there's a lot to the story, but let me just cite some research I've read over the years that, you know, these are other people doing studies. The Italians did studies and they found that if you have sex with a woman after ejaculating, your body also makes prolactin. 
and prolactin frees you from addiction to sex. It, it's actually that hormone that causes you to feel a sense of recovery. Uh, and but if you're if you're not making love, that recovery is very short. Then suddenly you want to have sex right away. It's evolutionary. It's mm -hmm. built into evolution that if you have sex with a woman basically who loves you, you'll love her. There's it's a reciprocal thing in sex. You got a mutual love. Then your body makes a plenty of prolactin so that literally you'll not be interested in sex for a while. So you're not out pursuing another woman when you go into that rubber band thing. You got busy things to do. Mm -hmm. Prolactin saves you for that. But what they found, the Japanese did research that showed that if you don't ejaculate for six days uh, after making love, having sex with somebody, some person, uh, then your testosterone level always after having sex goes down 50%. When you're masturbating, it goes down 50%. Then it will stay down, around down for six days. On the seventh day, if you don't ejaculate, it will double. Okay, so now you get to be Superman again. Uh, and that's really important to sustain passion in a relationship that a woman experiences your passionate desire for her. Biologically, we know we can test the hormones. When a man's testosterone level doubles, he puts out a smell pheromone that awakens a woman's estrogen to double as well. You see, for women mm. to fall in love and stay in love, their estrogen levels need to be double their normal amount. So if she feels safe and loved by me, when I'm in her presence, her estrogen levels will shoot up. Now there's, you know, newness will also, for many people in the beginning of relationship will cause it to go up, but newness goes away. So you need to have the high testosterone if you're a man to stimulate that high estrogen in her. And if, you, if you're ejaculating, you're constantly lowering your testosterone. It just stays at a lower level. Then you crave sex. This is the addictive part of it. You crave mm -hmm. masturbating on porn, or one night stands, or women, you, you just lust after them. And when that's happening, you're just losing your energy. You see, sex is a, energy creates life. And if you share that with somebody who loves you, it's like a mirror, it comes back to you. You feel great. But if you don't share it, now see, uh, you're suggesting people to wait till they're married to get to have sex. That's not my recommendation, but my life is I didn't have sex I had sex as a teenager, stopped at 19 and didn't have sex again until I was 28 and never masturbated the whole time. That way, that gave me superpower. I mean, I used to meditate 18 hours a day. That was my occupation, mm. teaching meditation and taking retreats. I mean, you try sitting up completely straight in lotus position for 18 hours uh, without doing anything. <laughs> it takes power to do that. Wow. And But it builds up. You see, as you maintain that semen energy inside of you, but you got to use it. Now, if you don't use it through making love, you have to use it through some sort of spiritual or cultural challenge, like playing a guitar, for example, mm -hmm. something that pulls forth your genius, because that's the genius energy. So for me, it was meditation that pulled it through and changed my brain function. So, you know, you they back in the 70s, they did the first EEG stuff on my brain. They picked me because they got the best results and they got the best results because I was the only real celibate. I found out later all the other monks <laughs> were all masturbating, some were having sex, you know. So you're talking about if you if you go to celibacy, abstinence, you're talking about potency. And then when you have somebody to love who loves you and you're they're the one, okay, you you know, not having several girlfriends or whatever, you got one and you're or you're married, you know, your heart's totally open to them and her heart's open to you, then that energy goes out, it comes back to you. Your testosterone still goes down, uh, but at six days, it will double back up. And, but you won't have that, that uh, addictive craving for it, that longing, I've got to do it. Then what happens is you evolve into the state, which is where you, uh, even with a sexual partner, you can learn how to have sex without ejaculating. Uh, that's what I learned eventually. I taught classes on that. Uh, in India, that's called Tantra. It's the westernized Tantra is kind of mixed up today. And then in China is called Taoism. They have a, you know, these are old systems that talked about sex sublimation. Even though you're having sex, you don't ejaculate. Then what happens, the whole idea is sexual arousal is so potent. The, the evolutionary force in our body makes it so pleasing that people will hunger for it. The two things that keep the race going is hunger and sex, you know? So, so, it, it, so when you have the pleasure of sex, it connects you very immediately to your feeling sense. You know, when something tastes really good, you feel strong, okay? Or if mm. something painful, you feel it strong. So when you have all that sexual stimulation, your feelings open up. But if nobody's there, you shut down. So that's the whole idea why, why guys, when you masturbate, you feel so yucky afterwards. You know, you just, 
it's kind of like you just lost all your juice as opposed to letting it build up in your bank account you know tell you you know then you can be super generous and give love unconditionally you don't get moody you don't get pouty you don't get depressed depression in men always is low testosterone anxiety in men is always low testosterone heart attacks in men is always low testosterone you know this is our challenge as men is how to keep that testosterone up and and you know you don't want to become girly and talk too much about your feelings now when i said that that's such a controversial statement because the psychology and all the women they want to say what are you feeling what are you feeling and we want to please them you know you want to be pleasing to somebody who cares about you so we start talking about our feelings and you don't realize that when you talk about your feelings it's a good thing to do if it's done in moderation it's very easy to do it too much because whenever you do it your estrogen levels go up and women are way on their male side today and so they just get turned off to you as well if you get all needy and emotional and share your feelings you go into the friend zone now to be in the male zone doesn't mean you have to be tough and grumpy and i'm um, throw around or any of this macho stuff. Actually, that, that doesn't work either. It doesn't make her feel safe. So you can make her feel safe without becoming like a girlfriend. Stay out of the friend zone and when you're dating and be more self-reliant, self-sufficient. And remember your primary source of happiness as a man is you and your work, you and your talents and skills, mm. you and your discipline, whatever that might be. You do it because you have to do it. You know, you earn a living. Once you can do that and be happy, then you're not dependent on a woman to be happy. You're not dependent on sex to be happy, but you're dependent on love to become happier. And love is through service. Male, the male side of us is the guy that goes into the army. Not that I'm saying everybody should go in the army, but you, you give your life up for your country mm. if it's necessary. You protect them. You know, that selflessness is masculinity. People always think men are selfish. I explain to women, wait, he's the guy who's doing dirty, dangerous, <laughs> and difficult. We're the guys that go out in the storms and fix things and feed people and do all this stuff while the women are at home. But they, they appreciate us when we do it, if, if, if when the whole gender thing worked. So today we're all mixed, mi mixed up. So the idea is when you're mixed up, you're going to have too much estrogen generally. Your testosterone is going to go down. So we need to be very conscious of skills that will keep our testosterone up. So you're reading Men Are From Mars now, which is an amazing book. And many men relate to it right away. Some women do. It used to be all women did. But now women are so much like men, they feel like they feel like I'm from Mars, too. And I said, <laughs> listen to the things I say about women and try to find that part of you. So I wrote this book, which is called Beyond Mars and Venus. Mm. That, that's kind of like how to help a woman come back to her female side because they can't have orgasms. You know, you, you think you're giving them orgasm. They're just making it most of the time because they, they've got to have already be happy and you take her to happier. And that's like a really code thing for us guys to know. My job when a woman's upset is not to make her happy. I, now, certainly I might, might have made her more unhappy. Guys can do that by not knowing the skills, like interrupting her when she's talking, arguing with her, telling her you shouldn't feel that way, or why don't you do this? It's typically called solving problems. Why? Because test, when you solve problems, you're producing testosterone. That's our go-to. Mm. But talking about problems makes estrogen. <laughs> so women complain. They want to share their feelings. They want to talk about the relationship and just turn men off because basically they're going over to their estrogen side and they don't know how to do it in a way that pumps us up at the same time. So I teach women how not to complain, learn how to ask for help, but don't complain. That just pushes your testosterone down and you lose interest or attraction to a woman. So those are some interesting ideas. Got it. No, that's, 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 that's amazing. A lot to, uh, to unpack there. So that beyond Mars in, in, in Venus book, that would be, I guess the solution to, I mean, not to make this a, a political conversation, but to the, you know, the problems that we're facing kind of in the world today with, with not knowing what is our gender. There's, you know, there's a whole class and in, in society of, of over feminized men. And then there's the over masculine female. We're not saying that, you know, men don't have a female or feminine side and women don't have a masculine side, but, but, but we're, we're, we're entering a very dangerous uh, time here. In my opinion, like if we, if we lean too far one way, like we're, we're set up. So, so we're definitely going to get this book. Uh, share down. Yeah, that, I want to get that in as many that, people's that hands as, as possible. Beyond Mars and Venus. It's like, you know, there's binary, non-binary relationships. And so yeah. if you go non-binary, you can, you, you know, we, we're all free to do what we want. Okay. I don't mm. judge anybody for what they do, but if they're finding that they're stressed or if they want to sustain passion and happiness and joy in their relationship, always when a woman is, if you've got a, if you've got a vagina, regardless of your, how, the gender you've chosen, if you've got a vagina, Estrogen is essential for you to maintain the balance of your estrogen mm. while you go over to your male side. 
if you're taking testosterone, it can be challenging to stay over on your female side. And also any man or woman taking testosterone, uh, you're, talking, you're taking steroids. So you're shortening your life. That's what's happening. Now you want to do that, that's fine. But taking, taking steroids is, um, you know, you look at all of the football players and whatever from taking all the steroids, their muscles are all bunked up. But then they end up uh, having pain, a lot of pain later mm. on. And then they have no libido as well because uh, taking steroids shrinks your balls. So, and also I just say something else, you know, because I know you're an active guy. And one of the things when it comes to the libido, if a, you're a, a too active guy, if you use your muscles too much, that can also cause you to run out of testosterone. Uh, so there's a balance here. I learned that back, mm. you know, back before the internet and the gym, there'd be all these muscle magazines and I'd be reading the muscle magazines and there were always libido products. Okay. Now, why does a muscle guy need libido? Yeah, I was an <laughs> 18 year old, you know. I couldn't keep my penis down. I mean, what, what do they need yeah. a libido product for? And so, because what, what it can do is it can actually uh, lower your testosterone when you're with a girl. Okay, now how that, what that's about is when you use your muscles and you build them up. And, you know, I love going to the gym, pushing myself. I got pecs and all this stuff from my size. I feel really good. I love it. And, but I need plenty of recovery time for those, for the testosterone to come back. It's very, very important. And if I do a lot of exercise and I don't have enough recovery time to rebuild my testosterone, my libido has gone. And, and basically, because I don't ejaculate ever, uh, I got a libido that works every day. Okay. And, <laughs> but it's only, only, see, this is the idea. It's only to feel the love you have for someone. Okay. That's very important because once you're feeling the pleasure, it's easy for the pleasure to take you over, but you learn how to pace yourself. Now is, is it, is the pleasure more than the feelings of love that I'm having? And you just keep your priority is to feel love. You know, I know men who've written books on love and they'll say right in the beginning, love is not a feeling, it's a behavior. I go, whoa, wait a second. You've never felt love? Uh, you know, this is like a dry person, I'll tell you. Because uh, yeah, certainly there's loving behaviors without a date, which without a doubt, which do tend to, when you do those loving behaviors, quite often if somebody acknowledges you for that, it will tend to increase more love in your life. But, you know, it's when men are of service and people appreciate you for it, your heart opens more. And that's that's our dependency on on serving the world. If you don't serve, you're depressed. If you're a man, you just can't. You got to be you got to find that selfish part of you, but not so selfish that you don't care about the results. I think that's somewhere along the line. I just teach people not to be too egotistical or something. But we're more evolved now when you when you serve. Somebody needs to acknowledge, somebody needs to appreciate. It gives you the message that you are, have meaning in your life. You're making a difference. And you know, a lot of the gender binary, non-binary gender stuff comes from uh, two things. But one is in the past, gender relationships weren't always mutually f fulfilling. Uh, you know, there's a lot of men who took advantage of this, uh, but there was a lot of men, a lot more men that didn't. You know, I grew up in a family, which was very traditional. My parents stayed together. They loved each other. They my dad had his job. He made his money. My mother raised seven kids. We had a nice house, nothing ex ex extra, you know, just a nice house, nice neighborhood, maybe nicer than usual. And, and, you know, my mother was, she's feeling a little overwhelmed. She could send those boys off to the country club or into the woods, you know, go play. You can't do that anymore. It's tougher now. But because my dad had a good job, he got well paid. He wasn't super rich. He was well paid. Then his testosterone was up. You got to have be well paid if you're a man. Otherwise, you become too dependent upon sex to experience healthy testosterone. The sex will always, sex is ruled by the most primitive part of the brain, unconscious. You can't directly control it. And when, when, a, when you get a woman to undress in front of you, or you see a naked woman, or you see a woman undressing, whatever, that part of the brain says, oh, get ready to have sex. And that's primitive. Just like if somebody attacks me, that part of the brain says, kill them. Well, I'm not a killer, and I'm not a sex addict. These are things that come due to ununderstanding our body's energy and using willpower. Now, willpower is the most masculine thing you can do. And so you need options. If you know you get that urge and you want to masturbate, go get into an ice swimming pool or, or get into mm -hmm. an ice bathtub or you know, get into a nice shower. You can start with a hot shower and then go to cold, but cool your body off. You know, there's things you can do. Do push-ups, you know, go jog. There's a lot of things you can do at that time. And every time you're choosing the right way, your power, your personal power as a man increases. You know, it's mm. following through. You know, you can't see them over here, but I got 28 books I got behind me. 
and I wrote them all and I wrote them all on time. You know, I give me a deadline and I, I get up and I go, oh, it's coming because I'll procrastinate a bit, bit in the beginning. And then I said, no, I got to get in there and do it because my word, you know, I'm going to finish on time. That's a real key thing. Same thing with monogamy. It's your word. And if every time your mind strays, you come back to following your word, you have power. That's like a meditation. Basically, when I was a meditator, I would do the do the process and my mind would wander and I come back to the process. My mind would wander. I come back to the process. It's coming back. It's staying on track. It's keeping your goal in front of you and staying steady towards it. And nobody's perfect at it. Your mind's going to wander. It does this. Just don't act yeah. on it. That's the thing. You may think, oh, I'd like to have sex with her. Immediately shift back to something else. Just you in control of your brain. Don't let it control you. Oh, wow. That's so, so good. There's, I mean, there's, there's so many men right now that are, you know, that are my clients or students or, or have been around for a long time. Their heads are just nodding. Like, like we're speaking the same, the same language here. You know, I talk a lot about building self-confidence and confidence is, is built and kept by keeping the promises you make to yourself. And that's right in line with, you know, what you're saying. Like when you commit yeah. to something, you know, whether it's a deadline or, or getting a project done, it's like, you may deviate and pull from it, lose focus, pull track, but, but it's sticking to the commitment. It's like, that is what it means to be a man. Like you follow through yeah. and you say, you're going to do, or you do the things that you say you're, you're, you're going to do. And then, yeah, the, the physiological change, like when you're triggered, like understanding that triggers a false temptation and you have control. You know, you talked about doing a cold plunge. You know, we teach our students here, actually get in the cold shower every single morning, like do the hard yeah. stuff, like yeah. willingly. So then when that trigger comes, it's like, oh, okay, no, I'm in control of my, of my physiology. I can, I can do a quick breathing exercise, or I could tap into that meditation practice I've been doing in the morning. Like we're using all, all these tools. Like I, 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 I knew this was going to be fire. We're just speaking the same when, language. When I, was, when I was a monk, I mean, I just, you know, I'm like full gone. I'm going to go for this and this thing. And so yeah. I would uh, purposefully sleep on the floor just so it was become tough. Cause I, you know, I'm easy going guy. So I sleep on the floor and I'm not to recommend I only ate one bowl of food a day. And, yeah. and I started every day with a cold plunge, which is mm. I was living in Switzerland at that time. And I remember getting in there and I wanted to get in there first, put in that cold water and I'd go in and I'd, I'd bow down into the water. <laughs> It'd be like a prayer. And then I'd fly out of that water. <laughs> yeah. I'd take cold showers at home. Uh, it's just nothing like a Switzerland wintertime cold shower, a cold bathtub. But you, know, you still, do it, still do it today. Oh, I did the cold shower today. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and you guys on the, on the audio side, I mean, I don't know if you, if you caught it when he was sharing the, the story. So he wrote his first book 30 years ago when he was 40. So John's coming up on 70 if he's already not. And I mean, just hearing the energy in his voice, I mean, I'm looking at him, he's, he's young, vibrant. So, so the man is, 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 is sharing wisdom here with you. So, so obviously listen, so here he is still, still 70 year old, years old, jumping in the cold shower every morning. I, I, I absolutely love that. I want to, if you can, I, I, I want to. I also do intense exercise twice a week. I mean, I'm not a junkie, but I do 30 minutes and I've got a trainer who pushes me. He pushes yeah. me harder than I would do myself. That's why we all need coaches if we want to push mm. for inspiration. We need motivation and we need people who've walked the path. That's very interesting. You know, when I was, uh, you know, I was doing some heavy machinery and he was, uh, my coach walked off to do, you know, now they're, wiping everything down to the COVID thing. And he walked away. So he wasn't fully present with me. And I noticed that my power was less when he was away, when I'm alone, but having somebody be there who's been through what you are trying to do, you see, they've walked it there and they know I can do it. You know, he can, I think he watches my form and my breathing. He says, I know you can do it. Give me five more. And I'm ready to die. Yeah. You know, my body's trembling and everything, but I'm too embarrassed. To, to be weak, you know, I go, okay, I can do it because I have somebody who believes in me who's done it. You mm. see, he knows what yes. muscle, touch the muscle, whatever. It's amazing to have somebody who's done what you want to do. And in my experience, I'm telling you, this this whole ejaculation thing, when I when I gave that up, and I have so much juice, so much power, so much creativity. And in my relationship, my love relationship. I've learned how to have orgasms even without ejaculating. And that's something you build towards. It's an amazing, amazing experience that you can have. And because you're doing celibacy now, it'll be much easier for you because you don't have that addiction to that release. So what's happening when you release it? Ejaculation is your testosterone is going higher and higher, but you're also feeling all this pleasure. And then there's a point where there's too much, too much energy in your body and it's short circuits. And what that energy comes from is the pleasure is your estrogen levels peak, which an estrogen pushes testosterone down. 
So it goes way up and it pushes your testosterone down. It's just, it's such a losing thing. It's for monkeys, you know? This is the whole thing for monkeys. We're not monkeys. We have to learn. And you can do, you know, you have sex to make babies. But today, you know, we're looking to create a world of love. And I know people today, they want to feel passion in their life. They want to find a committed relationship. Because when you're in a committed relationship, a woman will love you more because she's not afraid of losing you. And, you, and you're holding tight to the guy you promised to be. And then when you're doing that, that's a lot of male energy. She, will re, she has to respond. When you've got that male energy, she will respond with love. And then you will feel all that love. And you, you basically, and it feels so good, that's the estrogen going up. You ejaculate, your testosterone goes down. You take time to recover and you come back for it. And the, the dynamic is you ejaculate with her, you don't lose energy but you don't build energy. Mm. And that's the two different things, you know, for many years in my marriage, I just had my Saturday night and I wouldn't do anything for six days and it would double again. We have fantastic sex, fantastic sex. So finally I was able to overcome any, any need to ejaculate and just have orgasms. And that takes training and so forth. It takes a lot of practice, but first you have, I don't want to go into detail because we're talking about guys who are not yet married and not, are not having sex. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that's, um, you know, that's, that's, that's not, you know, that's not all of our audience and, you know, I'm not okay. here prescribing, you know, any, any sexual advice to anybody. I've made a decision in my life because I lived a very pleasure seeking life for 20 years. Had a lot of sex, um, yeah. had a lot of meaningless sex, and and yeah. and and know what it feels like to to have that and still feel empty on the outside. Now at the same time as I was, I was having loads of sex, I was also addicted to pornography. So this, when you were talking about this prolactin, like this is something that we only release or we only get that hormone um, when it's actual sex with a real person. So we can be ejaculating with with porn and masturbation six seven times a day, and there's no release of that. So is there danger if you're going down this this path? too far of the of the porn and masturbation to actually never actually release like can it have a like can it have an effect on your releasing a proactin in real sex does okay. that make sense so, yeah all make great sense okay now look everybody wants to be a genius okay we have a genius inside of us everybody's got their talents mm. I, I can't be a rock star i can't you know I, I play piano but nothing like great you know so so you know this is my thing and I'm yeah you've got your genius yeah, so everybody's got their thing that brings you great passion and joy, you know, and it takes a while to find it. You find it when you're not overly dependent on the outside for men. You're not overly dependent on the outside for your happiness. You, you gain this strength of self-reliance, self-reliance, where you're, you're building your testosterone. And anytime you have like genius, you've got a blend of testosterone and estrogen. Okay. You got to love what you do and you got to do it and be strong about it and set your goals, overcome the challenges, not procrastinating. And these are the goals. You know, I'm not, I don't want to present myself as some perfect guy here. I procrastinate quite a bit before I write a book. It's like, oh, <laughs> it's a what? It has to like, it, it, it hurts more to not do it than to get in there and do it. Because, you know, as a creative <laughs> writer, you have no idea what you're going to write. If it's going to be creative, it's got to be something from a blank page, you know, and so, and, and also because I am, I have a balance of the masculine and feminine I've cultured through celibacy and through love. Now, when I, by balancing that, I have a genius that overflows all the time. I mean, it just keeps coming out and coming out and coming out. But even for me still, the challenge is when I write a book, I finish a book and I read it. And I go, how did I do that? I don't know how I did it because the genius is actually, you're off to the side and something takes over, you know, that's part of it. Mm -hmm. and so, Every guy, you want that, you know, you want to have this awareness that, that tunes into the things that will fulfill your desires, fulfills your mission in this world, keeps you coming back to finding love and loving yourself, feeling confident. All that good stuff is fueled in a man by sexual energy. I just, you know, that's been my life. I've been learning nine years of pure celibacy, then learning to only have sex with love. I had a lot of sex and I, and I love the sex, but I didn't even know the women. So it, 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 it would deplete me. The, with my wife, sex never depleted me. However, because I didn't do it too much, as I mentioned, I had the seven, six days recovery time. And then sometimes I would practice the uh, no ejaculating sex. The problem with that for me, I'll just throw it out there. If you practice having sex without ejaculating, it's a rhythm. You got to get into the right rhythm. If you get a little greedy, uh, you get blue balls. <laughs> so mm. you, have to, you have to really stay in your heart. And, and when, when you start getting close to ejaculating, you got to slow it down, change your position and, and start all over kind of a thing.
but boy, so which which one of your books uh which one of your books explores explores this topic that we could dive deeper in we don't have to do it here but i'm saying for no, for myself no, and for any listener that is really curious i have a, I have a uh, mars venus in the bedroom is one okay. of my books and another one is um i have a class at my website marsvenus.com where people can can take a course on it that's available there and the the subtlety of of what I'm about to say now, there's a lot of information in there. One, one of the things is also never ejaculate unless a woman has an orgasm. That's like the basic rule. And I, I, as you're training, you want to make sure she has an orgasm before you ejaculate. Because if she doesn't have an orgasm and you ejaculate, the energy doesn't come back to you. Okay. And also, you know, you think, oh, I'm going to give her an orgasm after you've come. There's no energy. It's really, it's, it's like some kind of mechanical thing. So you want to keep your juice there until she has her orgasm. Then she's wide open. And if she's wide open, then when you give your juice to her, the energy comes back to you and you never feel depleted at all. But you don't grow in your superpowers. I have to say my superpowers came from my abstinence and, and superpower meaning to get to do what I want to do, to achieve what I want, to, to make the right choices with my investments and with my life and my mm. work. You know, this is all listening to your soul. Your soul gives you more message. When you're just clinging to your senses, your soul is being left out. It's like a whisper inside of you, the whisper of God's voice, so to speak. Be silent and know, hear God. You know, this is beautiful. Mm. But you, if you're always just going after sensual pleasure, you miss it. That, you don't have to give up sensual pleasure. You just have to do it in the right measure and look at what the outcome is. Things that feel really good that may leave you feeling not so good are not the right things. Things that don't always feel good right away, but they lead you to feeling better and better and better. That's the that's the path to go on. Uh, so the, you know, life can be very deceptive, as you 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 said. Temptation, temptation always feels better than reality, <laughs> it's just and, until you're grounded in reality, and then it, then it's ecstatic. Okay, but that that immediate st uh, stimulation is like we go for that. Now, what happens with addiction? I want everybody to understand this. I wrote a whole book on uh, freeing the brain of addiction. Uh, you know, we're talking about alcohol addiction, ejaculation addiction. It can be addiction to sports, addiction to anything, uh, addiction to sleeping. So anything which you you compulsively do that you know is not good for you. Okay, that's part part of an addictive quality. Now, what happens is when you take let's just take a, a common addiction like cocaine because that's well researched. When you when you when you're addicted to cocaine. Cocaine produces so much energy and aliveness, and that comes from stimulating dopamine. Dopamine levels go high. As soon as dopamine levels go high, it desensitizes the brain because it's too much stimulation. And now normal stimulation gives you nothing. So literally, they measure the brain. When somebody takes cocaine, they lose 30% of their potency, their, of their receptor sites. The cocaine stimulates dopamine, huge amount of dopamine gets produced. The dopamine receptors, they close down, 30% of them close mm. down. So now normal life is 30% less fulfilling. So now you need the cocaine just to experience what normal life could potentially give you. And the more you do the cocaine, the more those little flowers close down. Yep. And that's, that's the desensitizing of the brain. And in order to resensitize those receptor sites, you need to stop the high dopamine stimulation. Like for example, you just cold turkey, stop ejaculating. You know, if you stop ejaculating, it gives your those receptor sites a chance to open back up again. So you start experiencing everything in life as more pleasurable. And when, le when life becomes normally pleasurable, then you're not like this hungry person. I, I'm hungering for that dopamine hit to feel my power as a man. You actually start going out there and doing nice things for people and for yourself. And that gives you that hit. Of, of dopamine mm. fulfillment so yeah this is this is this is go ahead so i, I went before I, I don't want to forget this but there's a supplement that nobody knows about only I, i'm the only one who talks about this all right and that is it's called vitex now it's a supplement which is uh it was it's very popular in europe to help regulate women's hormones and uh but it's also a supplement that men monks male monks would take and it was people think it's in order to stop their sex drive all right so people are afraid of it guys who want sex drive they want testosterone they're not going to take this vitex supplement and uh 
but it wasn't actually the monks weren't taking it to stop sex drive. They were taking it to stop their addiction to sex. See, it's very different. See, they're all out there masturbating and they can't stop. You know, they, they, they just... These becomes, are monks are masturbating, are addicted to, se to sex and masturbation, monks. Of course, uh, so many of them are, yeah. Okay. They're not with women, they're, they're masturbating. They're getting yeah. their release. I can't say for all monks, okay? I just, the one, my friends, I found out later, they were all masturbating. Yeah. But I, you can also smell somebody who's been a monk for not for about seven years. After about seven years of no masturbation for me, you could smell under my armpits and it smells like semen. It, it really is that nice. Is that why I stink? I keep okay. telling people at the gym when they get close to me, I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, I don't know what's going on, but I stink. And it's, it's a just, smell that I haven't ever had. I'm 37 years old. I, I don't I think have it, a, I have I think, a, I think, it's the sweetness of semen. That's what it is. Oh. It's coming out your body. It's oozing into your brain. You know, it makes you radiant being. That's very cool. Well, uh, next person, next person listening, uh, hearing this, that gives me a hug. Tell me if you get the sweet scent of semen when you're close to me. <laughs> I don't know if you should tell them that. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this Vitex, it's... this is a uh, this is this is a supplement that we could we could pick up online. Is it a, is it yeah, available yeah, through, yeah. through All your site or? I you know, I'm a brain hacker. I got a lot of supplements. Yeah. I recommend. MarsVenus.com. You can pick it up, but you can get it anywhere online, Vitex. And you take it. And, you know, the, the thing is, people will think, oh, well, this is for uh, suppressing sexuality. Actually, it restores dopamine function in the brain. Mm. It's not so dependent upon the high hit of dopamine. So wow. I, I highly recommend that. I also recommend any guys who've been masturbating for a while to take... Uh, a substance, a sup, a supplement called Tonkar Ali. Uh, it's one of the libido herbs, but it's the only libido herb that I know of that actually sends a message to your brain to make more testosterone. Okay, sends a message to your brain to make more testosterone. And there's um, and what what was that one? Can you can you spell that? I'm sorry, John. T O N G, T O N G K A T, yep. Tonkar. Uh, so Tonkar. Ali A L I. There's other names for it, but that's the name that. It's very popular and you know i have a good supply of it at my my website as well if you go under yeah. libido supplements you you can see i, I do no, that's great there, but, yeah yeah we're definitely gonna i'm definitely gonna gonna do some research on that you know when you were sharing that if you wanted to be celibate for example you wouldn't think i want to take something to boost my testosterone because that makes you horny right well there's certain things actually horny goat weed will make you horny but tonkat mm -hmm. ali just boosts your testosterone and so it's yeah and that's going to make you more mentally clear. It's going to make you stronger. You know, yeah, like it's going to make you. It's going to make you more of a man. Like yeah, just increasing your yeah. testosterone is just going to make you a better, it, better it, version, it will, better, better man. In mind, yourself. if you're a celibate guy, it, it is going to get whether you're married or celibate. It's going to give you much harder erections in the morning. Okay, I mean that, that's where you get up and take your cold shower. <laughs> just get yeah. The, you, you wake up with these hard erections. And, a sign of, a sign of health. You know, any, any, any client, you know, whether they're coming to me for, for, for addiction recovery or, you know, I still coach fitness guys as well. It's a conversation we have early on. You know, are you, are you waking up, you know, with, 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 with morning wood here? I love what you said on the, on, on, on the cocaine research and, and how resetting the dopamine, like it, it opens up to where you experience so much joy and, and happiness. You know, I've shared, you know, I've shared my experience. You know, once I remove that, that lens of pornography from, you know, from my brain, like, like colors appeared brighter, like the world just, you know, the world that I see became different. I see people for, for what they are, no longer objects. And it, it, everything you said, it's like the audience is going to be like, just it, confirming everything I've been screaming at people for the last yeah, two years. Yeah, you know, so. I just want to back it up. I'm telling you at first, I remember as being the monk and all that, suddenly one day, it's just everything was radiant, you know, it was like patterns everywhere. It was like beautiful, you know, that now, yeah. now this is like almost 70 years old here, 69 and a half. <laughs> I go outside and we, big trees are like, they feel mm. like there's big angels and they're fully vibrant and alive. And I feel like I've shrunk down Love to that. this little tiny being uh, walking along this forest of huge, it gives you a sense of uh, uh, awe that, th th you know, that's why they had these big uh, churches, you know, they were really tall and expansive mm. to give people a sense of awe. Trees do it for me now. I just walk through the forest and I just feel like, I'm just walking in heaven. And, and that's because, I, love that. I mean, practical, you have to have loving mindset, but when you can start keeping that life force that creates a baby in your body and, and use it, you have to use it by, by serving others, you know, and, and achieving your, being a disciplined guy is a real key thing there. 
And you don't have to be super disciplined like I was sleeping on the floor. I did all kinds of crazy stuff, you know. I, I I'm so into like personal growth and everything. And and you know, ultimately the the highest personal growth is being able to sustain in, in my experience, okay, I'll just put it that way. Sustain intimate love with someone who's different from you. If you're heterosexual, you got this woman who's oozing femininity and you're oozing masculinity and you come together and you make love. And, and it literally, when you make love, it charges you up. Your heart energy goes out and your purpose becomes clear and you come out. But every level of life has got its stages, you know, and it just, you know, to be talking to you brings such pleasure to my heart thinking that guys are going to stop masturbating to porn and, you know, and start loving women. You know, this is what we're here to do. Loving ourselves oh, wow. and creating harmonious families. You know, this is, and it's also why couples are breaking up today because we know the potential is to have that passion, to have that love. And when you don't know how to sustain it, then people get divorced. And, you know, we're a different species today. And whether you're binary or non-binary, you got to have great passionate love, which then turns into great passionate sex. And you're a lucky person then. Another supplement I want to mention for guys, just to know yes. that when you're ejaculating, you're losing a lot of your zinc. Zinc mm. is necessary in order to make uh, yeah. to make your testosterone. I put together a mineral product, uh, which helps with addiction as well. It was uh, It's called Super Minerals for Men. And it's got uh, your zinc orotate, which is a form that your body can utilize quite quickly. And it also has something called lithium orotate. Now that's different from uh, lithium carbonate, which is psychiatrists give, but it's a lithium orotate regulates the dopamine and serotonin production in your brain. And that's really, it like kind of regulates the male and female side of you. It regulates calcium utilization and magnesium utilization. So it's like, this is, you know, we have the yin and the yang, the masculine and feminine, the two parts of us. Now, as we talked about in the beginning, the challenge is, and this started, this started in the sixties, you know, I'm a kid at the sixties. I was a hippie, long hair, you know, and you know, demonstrating for peace. That's all female side stuff, you see, as opposed to male side stuff. And one life to be wonderful and easy and fun. And who wants to work? Mm. <laughs> That's the female side. So I'm off of my female side. All the women were over there in support groups to work hard and change the world and, and, and be CEOs and break through the glass ceiling. So they're all going to their male side. Men are going to their female side. And what, what goes on is that's good, but you got to find the balance of the two. And that's what's happening now to the younger generation times, I don't know, times 10. They're so confused because they have full access to masculine and feminine energy. But if you're born a male, your big challenge in life, your soul, you come into a male body because your soul's challenge is to sustain anchored in your masculinity while you begin to embrace your femininity. It's so easy, men, to go over to your femininity and lose your masculinity. And what would that look like? Estrogen. And estrogen gets stimulated whenever you're dependent on anything outside yourself. So anytime you're complaining, you're blaming, you're angry, you're depressed, nobody's giving you what you want, you know, this is too hard, I don't want to do it. You're depending too much outside yourself, overeating as well, overtaking drugs as well, overwatching sports, mm -hmm. over, you know, when it's too much as opposed to balance. And you'll, you'll notice you just won't feel good. When you don't feel good as a guy, you're too far on your female side, generally speaking. Got it. Yeah, this has been this has been this has been so incredible. We're we're so blessed to have you uh, here with us today, John. Um, I know we're coming up on a hard stop, so I want to I want to get these last couple couple questions if 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 we can. First and foremost, I'm I just want to acknowledge you. I mean, everything that you've shared here, how you show up. You know, I I, I shared this with Dave. What I love about both of you, you're you're so similar in the fact that you could drop scientific reference after resource. I mean, 27 books filled with all this, you know, all this scientific literature. But at the same time, you have this spiritual, like human side of you that really shines through in all of your work and everything that you do. And, and, and I know that has just been, you know, what has, has really spoken to our audience so much here today is, is how this is, is, is not just about the science and the facts and this and that, but, but opening up to a world, a world of love. So uh, we're gonna get everything, you know, that, that you shared here plug down in, in the show notes. I'm going to get everybody over to, to your website. Is there anywhere online socially that people can connect with you or, or is the website well, the best I place? Do, right um, you know, I have an insider club where I, have, I connect with them a lot, but, and they get lots and lots of courses for free, but I do Facebook live every Thursday for three to four hours. And I answer people's questions. Wow. I have a topic 
I've done you know, a huge amount. I can talk forever. Yeah. Time, but, <laughs> so I talk for a couple of hours and we do a couple of hours of answer questions. So that's John Gray, Mars, Venus. That's my Facebook business. Facebook. Okay. You know, a personal one as well. But that's where I give that uh, online. And now I'm starting to do Clubhouse. I don't know if people have heard about Clubhouse, but I just did. Had yeah. Three people in my first Clubhouse. That was fun. You know, Amazing. So, so you're like, so you're liking Clubhouse. You're getting, you're getting good value or giving good value. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it very much. Uh, very much. They, uh, you know, the first time, you know, a person who wants my, my reason for being here is to share this message with as many people as possible. That's mm. my, my wish. And Clubhouse yeah, book, you. the we first talk I gave, 3,000 people, and they're all giving me rave hey. reviews, wanted to follow me. So that's there, pretty cool. So there, if anybody goes to Clubhouse, be sure go. to follow John Gray. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm waiting for them to get on the on the Android side of things. I have, a, I have an invite waiting for me that one of my friends sent me. The minute it opens up on Android, Frank will be in there. Frank will be hosting rooms. Can I ask you two more questions, John? I know we're, I know we're, 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 we're pressed. I'll get them yeah. real, real quick, rapid fire. Um, so a lot of your word has been on understanding the differences between, between men and, uh, women for all the men out there, you know, what is the, 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 the biggest, you know, piece of advice or, or the biggest thing that you can share with men as far as understanding women. When she talks, don't talk, get her to talk at least three times more, at least three times more. Don't say stuff. What you say is here's the three magic words, million dollar phrases. Hmm. Help me understand that better. I'll say it again. Help mm. me understand that better. Occasionally, then you throw in, well, tell me more about that. Really? Little comments, little nods. But you got a goal here to get her to talk. And don't talk over her. Don't argue with her. You don't have to argue with her. You see, you know, we want to be right all the time. You want to be, you want to do the right thing. Do the right thing is give her what she needs to come back to her female side, is to feel someone's mm. interested in me and uh, they care about me, they know what I'm saying. And even if you already can finish her sentence, don't finish her sentence. She doesn't know what the end of the sentence is until she says it. So if you you got it already, mm. you know, oh, I know where she's going with this, finish the sentence here, you understand better. Never think you understand better. She doesn't understand what's going on until she says it a few times. And your guy going, well, help me understand it better. What else? And then you do, what else? And then. And then she's not going to glow. You know, this is making estrogen in her body and you appear to be more attractive. Her stress levels go down and don't share so much about what's going on inside of you. I call it the, actually my daughter, Lauren teaches classes on this at MarsVenus.com. Guys, you can learn a lot about women listening to my daughter's blogs and she really got them mm. figured out. So more guys listen to her blogs than anybody else. But anyway, she, she says, just when she asks you questions, how do you feel? Give her the lunch box, uh, the l lunch menu. You say, well, you know, today I had lunch and I had this and this and this for lunch. Basically, you're just going to get facts. You're not going to reveal feelings. Mm. They can put your words out of you so they can hear the tone of your voice is is not angry at her, is not, and not an uncaring tone of voice. But don't go deep into your feelings. Otherwise, you go into friend zone. She goes back into her male side and you lose the attraction. So that's a real powerful Got one. It. Another real big one from Men and from Mars. So good. Little things make a big difference in women. So estrogen is well-being for women, right? So let's say a woman has normal estrogen. You give her 50 roses. She's going to have a big spike of estrogen. Or she's feeling good. Her estrogen's normal. You give her one rose. It's going to have the same spike. Lots of little spikes is what causes mm. Big point, big point. And here, take this one in as well. If her estrogen's really low and she's stressed, give her 50 roses. Tiny little spike. Give her one rose tiny little spike. So lots of one roses, hugs, affection, attention, asking questions, compliments, noticing her, giving her hugs, saying goodbye, giving hugs. These are the things that build her estrogen up. Then she can enjoy sex. Don't make sexual comments until she's feeling good. Then mm. sexual comment interaction feels really good. Got everybody that stuck around to the end. They just got the masterclass right there. Amazing. Amazing so much. Uh, last question. We ask every single guest. Obviously, the title of the podcast is The Superhuman Life. This title is a result of my own life's transformation, my story, getting free of addiction, you know, living with all of these addictions, sex, drugs, alcohol, porn, this and that, being shackled to so many things, finding that freedom and then stepping into the, the life of my purpose, what I was put on this earth to do. You talked about service today. So that's what I talk about. It's, 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 it's finding a life free of addiction free of shackles, and then one that lives in service of others. To me, that is living a superhuman life. So it's more of a philosophy than anything, 
Um, so I'd like to ask every guest as we as we end today, John, this has just been jam-packed with so much. We need everything plugged down there. If you guys haven't done so yet, subscribe, like the, like, like the show, rate, review. But as we finish here today, John, how would you describe or define living a superhuman life? Well, just what you said, you know, it's following my heart. <laughs> everything is following my heart and have courage to follow through. Following my heart, courage to follow through. When someone pushes my buttons, realize that's my button. I take responsibility for transforming how I feel back to my peak state without depending on or waiting for somebody else to change. And then you're going to be superhuman. Source will come through you. God bless you, John. We love you so much. Uh, this this has been incredible. I want to give you a hug through through, hug. through Riverside here, okay. here today. Thank you so this much. Has been, this has been so great. You guys had it here. Live through your heart. Don't ejaculate more than once every seven days. Ask more questions and don't give answers or solutions. We love you all. We'll see you next week. Thank you.